Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. From Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you a true story from the life of Sarah Sidden, starring Miss Helen Hayes. On the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here's our distinguished host, Edward Arnold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tonight, our true story is transcribed from the life of one of England's greatest actresses, Sarah Siddons. It's the story of one woman's determination to win fame and success against tremendous obstacles. We are pleased and proud to welcome as our star, playing Sarah Siddons, another great actress, Miss Helen Hayes. Now, here is Frank Goss. As the Christmas season approaches, one of the most enjoyable prospects is the sending of Hallmark Christmas cards to be chosen with pleasure and mailed with pride. For in Hallmark cards of any price, you find the inherent quality and craftsmanship you want in your personal greeting to your friends. And the familiar hallmark and crown in the back of the card shows, too, that you care enough to send the very best. And now, with Miss Helen Hayes as Sarah Siddons, Mr. Arnold brings you the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Sarah Siddons was born in 1755, the daughter of the manager of a traveling troupe of actors. All the years of her youth, she dreamed of the time she would become a great actress. Indeed, she married a young player in her father's company. Years passed, and though she appeared in many provincial productions, she was summoned for no great roles. But finally, one day, there came a call from one of London's most famous producers. Ah, there it is, my love. Mr. Garrick's office. Not yet, William. Let's not go in just yet. Oh, come now, Sarah. You've waited too many years for this moment. Many, to... many years, Will. Still, I'm afraid. The great producer, David Garrick. The great actress, Sarah Siddons. Come along now. Oh. Ah, Mr. and Mrs. Siddons. I've been expecting you. Come in, come in. Well, now, welcome to London. And how was your tour? Successful, sir. My husband We're died. grateful for this opportunity, Mr. Garrick. A, a chance for Sarah to appear on the London stage. And she'll be a great actress. You wait and see. Yes, that she will be. You see, Mrs. Siddons, we believe in you. Thank you. I hope I prove you right. My dear, from the moment I saw you in that touring company... Uh, what was the name of it? Uh, well, no matter. From the moment I saw you in that tiny theater, I said, there is a lady who can become a great actress. Oh, not yet, I said, but someday. <laughs> Perhaps soon. It's what I've always said, Mr. Garrick. Good. Mrs. Siddons. Yes, sir. You have a husband and children. Are you willing to give these up for success in the theater? But need I give them up? In a manner of speaking... Your career will take time and effort if you want to achieve greatness. I do. Good. Now as to the play. We'll open with The Merchant of Venice. You will play Portia. Portia? Yes. Well, that's a light role, a, a simpering role. Sarah's usually played heavier parts. She will. I can do it. Of course you can, Mrs. Siddons. As I was saying, we'll open in about four weeks. You'll play Portia, and you'll be delighted. <laughs> As they will applaud you, Sarah. As they will. Be still. I pray you, William, be still. All right, Sarah. All right, Sarah. And nothing is right. Oh, 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 diagnosis. Opening night nerves. Is that it, husband mine? A simple fraying of the nerves? Yes, and something more. Tell me, then. Tell me what more, sweet will. Tell 
Tell me. Oh, stop it, Sarah. <sighs> Let the acting happen on stage and not here in your dressing room. I mean it, sweet Will. Tell me of the tempests in me. Tell me why I am cruel and scream at you like a fishwife. Do tell me. I've said it. Opening night nerves. Such as you've had a thousand nights. In a thousand provinces. But this is London, Will. In a thousand provinces. And now you're in London at the Drury Lane with Garrick and a London audience. Whom I will not please. I didn't say that. Province actress, you called me. And not fit for the London stage. Not fit to carry a cloak for the great Garrick. Well, I tell you this, William, dear. London and the great Mr. Garrick will see tonight a Porsche such as they have never seen. Gently, Sarah, gently. A Porsche lovely, pliant and gay. Oh, Sarah, dear Sarah. Gay and enchanting and droll. Will. Yes, dear. Hold me. Yes. Oh, dear Sarah. Bird. Frightened bird. I can feel your heart tremble. Kiss me. Sweet Will. I love you so. And the desperation I bring you, forgive me for it. Forgive me, I beg you. Because you must live what you play? Because you must become Portia to play Portia? As you become a hundred other women and use them on me? In a moment, my entrance will... Yes. Tell me, this London audience, will they love me? Yes. We shall see. Sarah. No, don't touch me. No more. All right, Sarah. Isn't it exciting, Mrs. Siddons? Your first performance in London. Be still. I need only to wish... I'm sorry, Marissa. Forgive me. Come. We make our entrance. work in hand that you yet know not of. We shall see our husbands before they think of us. Shall they see us? They shall, Nerissa, but in such habit that they shall think we well, are accomplished how goes it? in oh, what she seems we tired. She I doesn't like the part. Anyway, it's, it, it's not right for her. Nonsense. Like She's a natural friend. comedian. I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm a fellow of the two and wear my dagger with a braver grace and speak between the change of man and boy with a reed voice and turn to two mincing steps into a manly stride and speak of greys like a fine bragging youth and tell quaint lies. How honorable ladies sought my love, which I denyingly felt sick and died. I could not do with all. Then I'll repent and wish for all that, but I had not killed them. Sarah, no, no, go back. You no. must go back. No. No. Sarah, you can still win them. Go back. You hear me? Go back. No, no. I'll never go back. Oh, Sarah, Sarah. Never. I'm done with it. They hate me. They all hate me. I'll work at anything else. The lowest, the most menial, anything, anything, but not this, not the theater. Oh, William, William, take me home. And this, my silver, Georgian, priceless. It's beautiful. It's beautiful what, Mrs. Siddons? Now that you're my house servant, it's beautiful what? Uh, it, it's beautiful, Mum. No flecks of dust. No, Mum. I run a gloved finger over my possessions, Mrs. Siddons. Now come over here. These, my goblets, my wine glasses, decanters. Crystal, pure crystal. Beautiful? Is it not beautiful, the sound? Sparkling, clean, crystal make? Oh, lovely, Mum. Mrs. Siddons. Yes? The life you've led. What about it? Mum. An actress. And having once been an actress, perhaps you will not find the climate and discipline of my house compatible with... Uh, with my what, Mum? The life you've led. You must understand I know a great deal about you. <laughs> Made inquiries. How, as a girl, you ran off with an actor fellow. Married him. As my mother did before me. There. 
You see? Mrs. Siddons. Yes? I must tell you. What? I saw you as Portia. Oh? A performance without, uh, without, uh, <sighs> You were not very good. No, I wasn't. Now. <gasps> the door, Mum. No, 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 stay where you are. I'll go myself. Oh, Mrs. Stone, how delightful of you to call. No, stay for a moment, dear, and say nothing. I got her. I have Sarah Siddons to make my bed, to pour my tea, <laughs> to brush my hair. And she minds like a puppy. Wonderful. <laughs> Come in, dear Mrs. Stone. Mrs. Siddons? Yes, Mum. Sherry for me, pot for Mrs. Stone. And briskly does it. Briskly, Mrs. Siddons. <laughs> Just a moment, we'll bring you the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. I imagine that during these next two weeks, like most of us, you will be puzzling over what to get those people who are still not checked off your Christmas list. Well, you'll find some delightfully original and inexpensive gift ideas at the fine stores where you buy your Hallmark Christmas cards. For instance, boxes of Hallmark notepapers make most attractive and useful gifts. These notepapers are so handy to have for all those occasions when you don't want to write a long letter and for thank you notes or invitations. You'll find boxes of these smart Hallmark notepapers at only 59 cents, $1, and $2. And if you want to thrill youngsters you know, or find stocking presents for your own children, be sure and see the amusing Hallmark toy cards. These are cards that are also gifts, and the youngster first assembles the toy and then has it to play with for many happy hours. Boys will love the Hallmark jet wing a model jet plane that comes in an envelope for only 25 cents. And for girls, there are the charming Hallmark paper dolls. Each doll comes in an envelope complete with a cut-out wardrobe and costs only 25 cents, too. Yes, you'll find many original, inexpensive gift ideas at the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards. The cards with the Hallmark and crown on the back, the symbol that you look for when you care enough to send the very best. And now, with Miss Helen Hayes as our star, Edward Arnold brings you the second act of our true story from the life of Sarah Siddons. And so, Sarah Siddons was a failure. She blamed herself for it. She told herself she was a poor actress and all the years she had given to the theater were for nothing. It was as if she punished herself for the fiasco of her first appearance on a London stage. She took the most menial job she could think of. She became a housemaid. And then one day... Oh, Sarah. Sweet Will, my sweet Will. Come in, Will. Mrs. Trowbridge? Gone for the evening. We'll have an hour to ourselves. Come, what wine will you have out of what priceless vessel? Oh, Sarah, please, I must ask... No, I've told you, Will, well not to speak of it. I am content. She pays me very well. You come to visit me here when she permits it, and I go to you the day she permits it. And you're miserable, Sarah. Answer me truthfully. Must you continue punishing yourself? <laughs> oh, Will... Leave this, Sarah. Go back to the theater. No. Because a London audience catcalled and hissed and... Because I am not suited to it. Because in the role of drab and slavey that I play here, my dreams are not haunted by their hateful cries, the pit wolves and the balcony baboons. <laughs> am I a comic <laughs> husband mine? No, not comic, but tragic, yes. A woman who can distill sorrow. A goddess who makes alchemy of emotion and for base metal uses the anguished soul. The words you spoke, Will, 
Not yours, surely. No, darling. The words of William Brinsley Sheridan, London's foremost playwright and the director of the Drury Lane Theatre. Will, are you mad? He said them to me. To me, your husband. Sarah Siddons, he said. Sarah Siddons should never have been cast in a frivolous role. This woman is a great tragedian. He said it to me. I don't believe it. Oh, Sarah, my dearest, I ask only that you come with me to Mr. Sheridan's office. Then decide. Will. Very well, William. I will go. And then decide. Will you come back to us, Mrs. Siddons? Will you come back to the theatre? No, I cannot. Why? Because I was a failure. I was not worthy of it. And I am not now. I think differently. <laughs> then you did not see me as Portia, Mr. Sheridan. I saw you, and I am quite ready to agree. You were a failure, and you richly deserved the catcalls of the pit. Then why? I saw you play once in the provinces. I saw your Lady Macbeth. The memory of it has not diminished, nor dulled. Mrs. Siddons. Yes, Mr. Sheridan. I am willing to gamble. My reputation, my money, my peace of mind. Surely yours is the lesser gamble. I ask it only once again, Mrs. Siddons. Will you come back to the theater? Don't you understand, Mr. Sheridan? To face an audience again, to think that at any moment, one of them, or all of them, may rise up and boo and hiss until you're driven from the stage in a, in a storm of grief and humiliation. No, no, it, it would take the courage of a greater person than I, Mr. Sheridan. I cannot do it. Yes, it would take courage, Mrs. Siddons. The kind of courage it takes for a woman to swallow her pride and seek employ as a housemaid to a wealthy snob. It would take a great deal of courage, Mrs. Siddons. That kind of courage. Then you... you know? Yes, and I also know Mrs. Trowbridge, so I can recognize real courage when I see it. <laughs> oh, surely, Sarah. Surely you can't refuse him. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, Mr. Sheridan. You have employed a new housemaid. <laughs> <laughs> Come in. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come the in. The theater come filled in. and. How do you feel? What? I said, how do you feel? If I were dead and all the waters of the sea would be awash over me. Then you'd be happy. Yes, yes, I would. May I say something? You may. Stupid, stupid woman. What? Stupid, stupid woman. How dare you talk to me as if I were... An actress who was not a great actress? You are quite right, Mr. Sheridan. To wish myself dead at this moment would be the thoughts of a stupid woman. This moment. May I tell you of it? Time has small splendors for all of us, and this is mine. To go out there upon a stage again... As if I'm being born again in a bright and shining world of imagined tragedies and laughters and... Applause. Yes. And adulation. Yes. Where's William? What's he doing now? William? Yes, William, my husband. William, where is he? What is he doing? As I came in, he, he was standing there outside your door and... His head in his hands and worried. Poor William. Dear, dear William. William? Yes? Oh, William... Oh, my dear William, worry. Oh, no, Sarah, it's just... This night, this dread night of the first now appearance after an absence... stop talking nonsense, absence, Sarah. So... You're a great actress. I was a great actress some years ago, and they mocked me. roles that were not proper for you. Hasn't Mr. Sheridan told you that time and time and you time... You believe and... it. There's Truly no... you believe it. There's no doubt of it. Oh, my dearest, dearest, dearest beloved. You are a great actress, and... The curtain's going up. Oh, Lady Macbeth. Yes. Yes. My dearest. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. They like her. They adore. Quiet. 
Lady Macbeth walks in her sleep. Out, damned spot. Out, I say. One, two. Why, then, tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and a feared. What need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? Do you mark that? The thane of Fife had a wife. Where is she now? What? Will these hands ne'er be clean? No more of that, my lord. No more of that. You mar all with a starting. Go to, go to. You have known what you should not. She has spoke what she should not. I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. Here, yeah, the smell of blood still. All oh, the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh, oh, oh. What a sigh is there. The heart is sorely charred. I would not have such a heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. Pray God it be, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. Yet I have known those which have walked in their sleep who have died holily in their beds. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out on his grave. Even so. To bed. To bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come. Come, come, come. Give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed. To bed. Will she go now to bed? Cheer her. How they love her. Oh, tell me, Mr. Sheridan. Tell me. Tell me. In one performance, you are the first lady of the English stage. Your voice more delicious than delicious music. I the applause, the noise, I did not hear you. So what, what you said? I should like to present Mr. Disraeli, Mrs. Sarah Siddons. Uh, Mr. Disraeli. Uh, I am honored. Dear lady. Your performance tonight, a pavilion of wondrous women, all called Lady Macbeth. Thank you. Where's William? I beg your pardon? Uh, her husband's name is William. Oh, I see. Where is he? In your dressing room, waiting. Mrs. Siddons, your performance tonight was of such tenderness and beauty that... Sarah! Sarah! William! Oh, you were so very good, my dear. And? I'm so very proud and I love you so much. Dear, dear, so proud. Oh. What's the matter? Mr. Disraeli, Mr. Sheridan. Why, they've gone. <laughs> That's nice. That's very nice indeed. And so Sarah Siddons was an immediate success. A failure as a comedian, rather, I should say, miscast in light-hearted roles, she came into her own as an actress in tragedy. The great people of the time came to pay her tribute, the kings and the poets and the statesmen. Never was there such a star as the immortal Sarah. Year in, year out, each triumph greater than the one before, and always with her husband beside her. One of the theater's greatest actresses, one of history's most courageous women. Mr. Arnold, 
and Miss Hayes will return in just a moment. In your family, do you put your presents under the tree on Christmas Eve? We do, and the excitement of that day. Every time someone goes through the room, they take a peek. Even if you have no curiosity about what's inside, you can't help thrilling to the outside beauty of the packages. Yes, the way a gift is wrapped certainly adds to the excitement and pleasure of Christmas. That's why so many people choose Hallmark gift wraps exclusively. You can do so much with them. The colors are unusual and distinctive, the patterns are designed by skilled artists, and everything, the paper, tags, seals, and ribbon, is designed to blend for a beautiful effect. With Hallmark gift wraps, you can select designs that are best for big packages or small boxes, or other Hallmark wraps that carry out the theme of the gift itself, like toy designs to wrap a child's toy. You'll find special Hallmark gift wraps that are designed particularly for men's, women's, and children's gifts. And for that final added touch, there are the new Hallmark gift trims. These are three-dimensional cutouts that come with their own adhesive sponge rubber. Attached to the outside of your gifts, they glitter and sparkle and give that extra touch of magic to the gifts you'll be putting under the Christmas tree. And as with Hallmark cards, these trims and gift wraps bear the familiar Hallmark and crown, the symbol that you look for when you care enough to send the very best. Now, here is Edward Arnold with Miss Helen Hayes. Helen, it's an exciting Sunday when you are with us on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Thank you for your usual beautiful performance. It's especially fitting to have Sarah Siddons, a great lady of yesterday's theater, portrayed by a great lady of our modern stage. And say, didn't you win the Sarah Siddons Award last year for the best performance by an actress? Yes, I did. That happened in Chicago. They've instituted that award to help create more interest in the theater in Chicago. And I was thrilled with both the idea and the award. And I'd just like to say that I'm always happy to be asked to come back to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Thank you, Helen Hayes. You may be sure it is our pleasure. Now, Frank Goss, I believe you have a special announcement to make. Uh, yes, Mr. Arnold, I do. For 19 consecutive years, Lionel Barrymore has been heard in his unforgettable role of Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Because the Hallmark Hall of Fame feels his portrayal has become an important part of the Christmas tradition, next week we will present a transcription of Mr. Barrymore's last performance as Scrooge. And may I add, Frank, uh, that it was Lionel's favorite role. I know he would be pleased to see the tradition that meant so much to him personally continued. I hope you will join us next week. Until then, this is Edward Arnold saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. The Hallmark Hall of Fame is produced and directed by William Proof. Tonight's transcribed script by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Kent Smith was featured as William. Others in our cast were Virginia Lowe, William Conrad, Viola Roach, Tudor Owen, Joseph Kearns, and Lorna Thayer. Next Sunday, the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television will present John Carlos Minotti's famous Christmas opera, Amal and the Night Visitors. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you until next week at the same time when we will present a transcription of Lionel Barrymore in his famous portrayal of Scrooge in Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Today, three out of five schoolrooms are overcrowded. This is a vital concern to every American because our country's whole system of government depends upon well-educated men and women. How you, as an individual, can help improve the schools in your community is explained in a booklet published by Better Schools. The booklet is free. Write for your copy today. Address, Better Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York 36, New York. This is the CBS Radio Network.